what up, me Anthony? This Smiley out here tuning in at the Villain Arts Art Festival. We're right here with the homie. Danny Vasquez. Danny Vasquez. That's a, that name sounds official, bro. I think so. How long you been in the game? I've been tattooing professionally for about 22 years now. I started really when I was 14 in East LA, just doing, you know, ghetto rig prison style machines and uh, doing it like that. I started off, but then about I got an apprenticeship, and that's when I count, you know, about 22 years ago when I got apprentice and taught the right way to do a tattoo. And I've been doing them ever since uh, professionally, about 22 years now. Dope, man. Who who taught you? I got taught in um, East LA, Big Johnny. He was just this big like biker cholo dude, my uncle actually, and he was like, had a shop. So he was doing tattoos in the military and in jail. So he had opened up a shop and then kind of like brought up uh, his son and me under his wing and kind of trained us to do tattoos, yeah. That's dope, man. How how much do you love, or what's the yeah? How much do you love being a tattoo artist, bro? Oh, I couldn't. I could, this has been my the goal since day one. The first first time I put a tattoo on somebody, I fucking knew it. I was like, this is uh, this is what I need to do. This is what I want to do, and it's been the goal since I was 14. So it's really a blessing to you know actually break into this industry and do what I love. I've always been an artist. I've always been able to draw and fucking. This was the name of the game from the get-go, so it's, a, it's a, I love it. It's a blessing to be able to make artwork, travel the world, and uh, leave my mark on people, every city, every state, every country. That's dope, man. I see the community out here, man. It's, it's a big thing, bro. You know, we, we're kind of new to this whole tattoo uh, world, bro, community, yeah. bro. But you see the love amongst everybody, bro. You see, like, the unity and everything, bro. Um, is that something that you started seeing more recently, or has it always been this way? It's kind of been like that. I mean... Like when you're on the circuit, so I do many shows. I do maybe three, four shows a month from January to November. And you kind of build a rapport and friendships with these people. We saw, I see a lot of the same people every weekend. I'm going to see that guy next weekend. I'm going to see them next weekend every time. So you become friends. and become like a small family. The hardcore ones that are like me that travel full time for work and do every single show. You know, I do almost every villain art show. Yeah, man. How hard is it to... Um to raise a family or have a family with this, this gets, type of career. Yeah, it gets pretty rough, man. I got three kids and uh, I just had a daughter. So it could be a little rough, you know, home a couple of days and uh, get back to it. Luckily for me, my uh, fiance understands and she's in the industry as well. So I bring the baby with me sometimes, my fiance and the baby with me to some of these shows. So it's kind of cool. I get to usually have my baby with me and my fiance is here working with me and uh, selling tattoos. and. It, it works out pretty good sometimes. You get to travel the world, man. Like, what's what's one of the cities that surprises you? How cool it was that you never even thought it would be that cool. Sweden, Sweden was uh, really uh, like I, I didn't know what to expect, you know. And when I got out to Sweden, I thought it was like white people, and it is. But like, they fucking love Chicano work. They fucking love uh, Blood In, Blood Out. Yeah. They fucking love that movie out there, dude. Yeah. I was I was just shocked. They're like quoting lines from the movie for me and like fucking it's like whoa shit like blood in blood out paintings they did and shit yeah. so that took me by surprise how, how actually how amazing the city was how cool the people were and like how much they appreciated the chicano culture and the artwork you know i was like whoa shit i didn't know it, it reached that far but yeah the chicano artwork and culture reaches worldwide everywhere man bro that's what we've been noticing you know like growing up as as kids we've always loved the chicano art the chicano lowriders the movies and all that, but now you see that everyone's embracing it. Um, how, how do you feel about that, man? Do you do do you like to see other people embracing our culture and our style? Yeah, you know, a part of it's like, oh, you don't want to see someone trying to uh, appropriate. appropriate the culture. You know, you see some of these Japanese cats dressed in full cholo attire. They want to get tattoos that say 18 or MS. You can't get this shit, man. I get, it's one way to dress it, but this is a way of life for us and yeah. some of us. And you, just things you can't get. And, um, but, you know, if you take it serious and appreciate and actually have a love for it, then, you know, you really can't knock it, man. Like, yeah. If you're faking the funk, then fuck off, you know. Yeah. But if yeah. you actually have a genuine appreciation for, uh, you know, uh, what we're about, you, know, you got to appreciate that. Do you see other tattoo artists that we're normally doing Chicano-style co- Chicano tattoos getting into that now? It's actually blowing up pretty big, man. I've been noticing that fine line, single needle Chicano style is coming back. A lot of these younger kids are fucking, uh, that's all they're doing. They're killing it. And it's, it's, I love it, man. Like, I, that's how I started. I started off doing fucking single needle tattooing and, and uh, I fucking loved it. So it's good to see it actually coming back. 
that too. It comes in waves and shit. So oh, okay. It's definitely coming back a little bit bigger now, and uh, a younger generation starting to appreciate it and uh, and bring it back to life. I fucking I love that. That's dope, man. Yeah, man. Being from California and from East LA, bro, what's something that you do to stand out amongst the competition? The style I have right now definitely stands out, and it's a mixture of what I love is American traditional and Chicano type work. I kind of call it uh, like Chicano traditional. So, uh, like a lot of my artwork has like definitely an American traditional feel, but the Chicano element. They got fedoras, flipped up hats, a fucking tr a, a American traditional panther, but with a fucking fedora and a panel dental gangstered out or some shit. And that's something that's different out here, especially out the East Coast or the Midwest. They don't see that type of shit. You know, yeah. I try to bring that my style, which definitely stands out some of, than some of the other artists. You know, it's not just cut and paste old school Sailor Jerry designs. It's got a little bit of a street flair, Chicano flair to it for sure. That's dope, man. I see you're all, um, you know, tattooed up from head to toe, bro. Blasted, homie. Yeah, it. Straight blasted. Yeah, homie. How old were you when you got your first tattoo? 14, dog. I got my first tattoo when I was 14, and uh, it was shitty, a little stick and poke cross. Then when I was like 15, my uncle uh, had got a tattoo rig and uh, made one like prison style, and he had tattooed the spider web on me, and, uh, and I fucking I never never fixed it. I left it the way it is since I was 15. My favorite tattoo. Yeah. But we're like we're like really heavy in music in our podcast, bro. What's something that you listen to when you're you know getting down on some work, man? Usually I, I play oldies all the time. I throw down with fucking low rider oldies, rockabilly. Uh, you know, old rhythm and blues for the most part, I usually play that. Maybe later in the night, I'll throw on some punk rock or heavy metal, but I start my day off with fucking low rider oldies, man. Oldies forever, Holmes. Forever, Holmes, for <laughs> sure. Yo, man, I want to say thank you for taking the time to talk to us, bro. Yeah. We, did, we have a podcast called Pura Cultura, bro. We want to highlight all the dope things about our culture, bro, and I definitely want to sit down with vatos like you, bro. Appreciate it, homie. Where can people find you at? Uh, right now, I'm on the road. So check me out on Instagram, Dbaskis Tattoo, and uh, I'll be at a tattoo convention near you. I travel mainly for this, so. All right, man. Shout out, mi gente. Stay tuned. Yo, what's good, man? This is Pura Cultura, man. We're checking in with the homie Rob. Um, what's the tattoo place you're checking in from? Uh, Psycho Inc. I'm out of Chicago. Chai Town. What yeah. side of Chai Town, man? I'm from the south side of Chai Town. So I heard, of, I heard of that spot, bro. I stay away, bro. Nah. <laughs> as long as you, as long as you go with somebody that knows the area. It's yeah. Fine. <laughs> you know, some people might be surprised yeah. that, you know, you having that uh, Charlie Brown in yeah, Chicago, yeah. they don't, they don't think that there's a lot of Ras out here in the Midwest, oh, bro. Yeah, there's a lot. Have you always been dressing with like Chicano style? Um, pretty much. I mean, I got a lot of family from Cali or family that lived in Cali. So I kind of always grew up, you know, with that Chicano upbringing, you know, Ben Davis, Paul Heads, Cortez and all yeah. that, you know? I mean, we have a different style in Chicago, but that's kind of what I chose, yeah. you know? Yeah, we talk a little different, man, but we still yeah, yeah. way. <laughs> um, gotta ask you, bro, um, how long you been doing tattoos? Um, I've been tattooing 10 years professionally. Well, not professionally, my bad, like five years, but in total, like 10. Yeah. Okay, um, who was the first person that let you put ink on them? Ah, oh, shit. My parents, both my parents. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, those are some uh, yeah. supportive prayer. I, yeah. I never heard that response, way, but that's dope, way. that's <laughs> yeah, dope. Um, have you ever tattooed yourself? Yeah, I tattooed myself a lot when I was starting out. Yeah. Um, who, <laughs> whoever um, inspired you or motivated you to choose this um, line of work? Uh, pretty much my deals, my pops, they had tattooed, you know, and I was in diapers. So I kind of just grew up with it and I fucking ran with it when I was like 14 and never looked back. <laughs> okay, man. So yeah, yeah. has this been everything you do? This is like a full time job for yeah, you? Yeah, pretty much my whole life. It's all, it's, that's all is revolved around tattoos and all that. So I got to ask, when you were younger, were you like an artist that you like to draw? Did you already see a talent in yourself? Yeah, I used to draw when I was a kid, you know, and you know the usual fucking scribbles, and eventually I said it, but me agarro, me, me dio más gusto, so I just fucking kept going. Okay. Yeah. What's the process by you kind of entering like a, maybe a mentorship or like getting in the game before you actually tattoo your first client? Ah, oh, man. I mean, honestly, nowadays, like apprenticeships, I'd, honest, I'd recommend an apprenticeship. Maybe go to different shops, show them your artwork, you know? Just show them what you got, and whoever, you know, wants to take you in, 
Make sure you know they're solid individuals and they're not gonna fuck you over, you know, or take advantage of you. Um, as far as like tattoo art and tattoo, you know, the line of tattoos, it ranges. What is your like, do you have a niche? Do you have a lane that you stick to? Um, I pretty much try and do it all. But like the main thing people come to me for is, you know, that black and gray, West Coast style, fine line, um, and like American traditional. But that's pretty much, I try to do it all, but okay. that's really what people ask me for. <laughs> okay. As far as um, being Latino, do sometimes people come at you for a certain type of art just because you are a Latino tattoo yeah. artist? Yeah, definitely. Mainly the black and gray. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, I don't know, they feel, I guess, it's more authentic, kind of like getting an authentic taco, you know, at a yeah. fucking fast, yeah. at a Mexican spot. <laughs> I get it, bro. Um, as far as all the tattoo uh, art that you've done, tattoo work that you've done, has there been any jobs or any tattoo requests that you've denied that you just said I'm not, I'm not gonna be willing to do that? Yeah, just pretty much like anything that's like boring, like tribal or you know, like senseless shit. But other than that, I just try to take everything in. What about like private areas, nudity? Does that bother you at all? Not really. I mean. It's business, you know, and we got to be professional. So as long as it's that and it doesn't cross any other lines, we're good, you know? <laughs> okay. Um, is there any, like, tattoo job that kind of stands out, that, that's kind of one of the wildest tattoos that you've done? Oh, man, I've done a lot. Maybe maybe three guys that fucking lost the bet. They got, uh, what they get, X-rated or some shit on their butt. <laughs> I mean, shit, I mean, the pay was good, so I was like, fuck it. <laughs> you know? That's what's up, man. Yeah. Um, can you let the people know where to find you on your social medias? Yeah, yeah. Um, you can find me at um, Tattoo Art by Rob on IG. And um, same thing on TikTok, and, you know, all that. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Yo, we appreciate you rocking with us, bro. Yeah, Rob, thank you, bro. yo, and this Pura Cultura, man, and we out. Yeah. Estamos bien locos, somos reales Mati cuando borracho el bien fiestero Las putas me buscan, quieren mi dinero Soy un bandolero, en la raya me muero What's up guys, Ink Hustlers, look Look at all the artists, all the amazing artists Kevin, Raccoon, the main man over there We're busy man, we stay busy We love coming to Minnesota, showing love Thank y'all for showing love to us We love y'all, pull up Check us out on the gram La vida loca se vive en el guero Soy yo y no cambiaré Hasta mi último día Lo que es mi cuidaré Yo, we out here in Minneapolis, man We got the homies out here for the tattoo convention Let them know what your name is Where you from, man Mr. Old Tattoos out of California, Southern California Southern California, what city, man? Grew up in Carson Carson, that's what's up, man How long you been tattooing? Oh, man, over 20 years, bro Over 20 years, that's a long time who, uh, how did you get started? Who got you into it? Oh, man, just growing up in the neighborhood, watching the homies do it. And uh, my mentor right here, Magic Tattoos, he showed me the game. Damn. Good piece right there. Who was your first tattoo, man? Like, was it a homie? Was it a... Homie, homie letters. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always... Shout out to the real homies, man, you know, being the guinea pigs to the homies starting out, <laughs> right? Yo, man, so... How you like Minneapolis, man? First time out here? Yeah, my first time. I love it out here. It's kind of cold, but not that bad. It's... You know there's raza out here, right? Yeah, I see a lot of raza out here. That's a good thing. That's what's up, man. Yo, tell us about what kind of tattoos do you do, man? What's your style? I like doing evils. evil work. Evil skulls, color, whatever. Even whatever whatever the client brings, I do whatever they want, like. You know okay. what I mean? You, you do... You do color, you do black, black and color, white? Black and white, gray, everything, bro. Tell us a little bit about the inside of the tattoo game, man. Like, what's what's the best, what would you say is the best thing about being a tattoo artist, man? Meeting a variety of people. You know what I mean? From anybody, you know, everybody. I get along well with everybody. I, I give everybody that love and respect. As long as they deserve it, you earn it, you got it, you know? That's dope, man. Is there um, is there any like, do you have like any restrictions on certain tattoos that you don't do, certain locations you don't do? No, no restrictions. You do everything. Yeah, yeah, everything. What's the craziest tattoo that you've done, man? Some butt cheeks. 
<laughs> oh, he said he said some butt cheeks. But I, I put the cap right in the crack. That's why he was holding it with the fucking his cachetes. Yo, you said he? Yeah, it was he. <laughs> women Yo. too. I did put a, tattoos on women's private areas, everything. For so, years, you know what I mean? So the the cap is that a known thing in the in the tattoo game? Yeah, little ink cap. <laughs> I never knew that. I never known that. You know what I mean? That's that's why we get in the inside news over yeah, here, man. Yeah. Yo, man, like for the people that are new to the game that want to get into the tattoo game, man, like what what kind of advice do you give them? Be patient. Learn at your your own pace. And when someone's guiding you, still be patient. That's it. Be patient, man. That's a that's a big key, I guess. And everything that you do, um, can you make a can you make a good living out of this game, man? Yes, I'm here in Minneapolis. Yo, he out here in the Midwest, man. From way over there, they're out here. It Yo. ain't cheap. <laughs> it ain't cheap, but, you know, obviously the homies are doing good. I just want to say thank you for thank chopping you. it up with thank us, man. You. We a podcast called Pura Cultura. We a podcast for the cultura, bro, for the culture, representing Mexicans, Chicanos, Latinos all over the world, man. I remember that. I've seen it on Instagram. Yo, man, we're going to you're gonna exchange information, put you on our podcast, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you again, man. Tarde o temprano contigo estaré De la calle soy y en ella moriré Yo, we out here at the tattoo convention in Minneapolis, man Chopping it up with the homie Rowdy Inks, man Yo, Rowdy, let him know what's up, man Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm right here in Minneapolis, Villain Arts I'm here all weekend, come through Yo, the homie made it out to the Midwest We know the homie rock with the podcast So we had to come through and chill with him, man But we got a couple questions for you, bro You know, just trying to let you know, for the people that are interested in the tattoo game, whether they want to get a tattoo, whether they want to be tattoo artists and all that, bro. Just a couple questions, bro. Like, um, how long you been doing tattoos, bro? I've been doing tattoos about 2014. Um, I didn't pick it up professionally until about four years ago, but uh, started off uh, just drawing, dude. Just getting my drawing on. Just drawing, bro. Um, who got you into the game, man? A couple friends. I grew up in the lifestyle of the Chicano, so I, my uh, aunts, uncles, mom, dad were all blasted up. So when I was growing up, I wanted to be that guy that tatted those people. You know what I mean? So that was my goal, and here I am. Yo, you know you're, you know you're a real one from a couple generations with the tias and tios are tatted up. That's what's up, man. Keep it gangster. Keep it gangster, bro. Yo, what's something that you love about being a tattoo artist, man? Fuck, dude, just putting my work on people, getting to know everybody, building that connection, that friendship with clients. Um, just knowing that people trust me to put my work on them and then they cherish it, dude. Like, this dude just came and got a tattoo. One of the first tattoos came back two hours later for another one, dog. I felt so good. I was like, hey, man, I really appreciate that. He's like, I love your tattoos, man. When you come back, let me know. And I was like, let's do it. Yo, that's what's up. It always feels good when people appreciate your work, yeah, man. Yeah. Um, do you do you get nervous when, you do, when you're doing tattoos or... Is that something that is only in the beginning of, of uh, when you start? Uh, to be honest, shit, dude, I, a lot of people get nervous. Even now, I've done so many tattoos. It's like just it's an interaction with the person. It's it's kind of like how uh, you vibe with the person. So if it's like they're cool or quiet, that makes me feel weird. And I get like all anxious and nervous and shit because they're not making a, making it any easier for me. You know what I mean? So I'm like, hey, how's it going? And they're like, oh, good. And they're like, oh, okay, you work? Yeah. They're like, ah. you know I mean, I'm like, oh, come on, man. Let's try it's some kind of interaction because then I feel like them watching me. I'm like, I like to interact, feel the person, you know what I mean? So they feel me, trust me. Right. Takes a little bit of the anxiety away yeah, when they yeah. when they laid back. And then we get those people that are like looking at you and they're like, as you're doing it, you're like, eyes up there, dog, don't look at me. <laughs> so have you ever had a time where somebody's unhappy with the with the work that you've done? No, I've always had good good compliments for what I've done. I've actually had one fucked up tattoo. That wasn't my fault. This dude gave me the wrong Roman numerals date, and as a tattoo artist, everybody hates those, Doug. I has to, had this dude write it out, fucking English, Spanish, fucking Korean. I was like, hey, Doug, is this the fucking the date you want? He said, yes. I said, double check. He said, yes. I said, all right. I got down to halfway through. He looks at his phone, and he's oh, fuck. I said, oh, what's up? He's like, it's the wrong date, man. So I was so depressed for like a week, Doug, thinking it was my fault. But everybody knew in the shop was like, bro, I seen you ask him a hundred times. So that's about the only thing that's fucked up. Yo, at least it was on him, bro. At least you didn't do nothing like no regrets or nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, no regrets and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's, what would you say is like the best thing about being a tattoo artist, man? Uh, the schedule. <laughs> the schedule? 
<laughs> can do whatever the fuck you want. I cannot tattoo anymore after this for about two weeks. And I go back to it, uh, you mean? But other than that, like I said, it's interaction, building and connecting the social networking, networking with everybody else from around the country. Dog. I met a gang of people already from all over. I'm excited to keep meeting more. So I, That's what I see, bro. I feel like when, when you're in the tattoo game, whether you're a person that gets tattoos or you're a tattoo artist, you're part of a, a whole different community, bro. And I, yeah, th yeah. I think that's a pretty dope thing because even, even us just being out here just trying to chop it up with a few artists and, and people that got tattoos, bro, you can see that it's a community of people that are really into this. International, Doug. There, there's artists here from New Zealand, uh, Germany, Berlin. There's a girl over here from Sweden. There's a couple of dudes from Australia, somewhere around here. I was like, damn. They got conventions in Germany and stuff, so I'm trying to hit out there one day. <laughs> one day. Yo, that's what's up, bro. Starting out with Minnesota, para todo el mundo, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, what type of tattoos do you specialize in, or do you kind of, or are you kind of good at all different types of tattoos? I'm kind of all around, but I do I do like doing fine line and American traditional. That's actually something I'm really good at. Other than that, I like to be well rounded. Something. And what, what what style is that like? Uh, more of like the big, bold, bright colors, kind of like that old school. You see like the lady heads or the tiger heads and stuff like that. That's okay. more more my style. Yo, that's what's up, man. I see you guys out here being busy, bro. Um, how you liking the city, bro? Being out here in Minneapolis, man. You, you see some Rasa out here, bro. How does that feel, man? Hey, it's cool that they're out here, dog. If you made it this far, you deserve your citizenship because it's fucking cold, dog. I came out here, my balls were gone. And I I was like, oh, shit. And they're like, hey, it's warm. I was like, warm? <laughs> the fuck? But no, it's cool. I like it. It's, it's, it's a beautiful city where we're at right here in the hotel. I seen the sunset, the sunrise come up today, and I was I was like, that shit's do that's dope, dog. Homie was early up and up for the, the sunrise, man. Yo, man, we definitely wanted to chop it up with you, bro. We appreciate you, uh, you know, chopping it up with us, man, yeah, getting some content for the for the pod, bro. You know, we all about the culture, man, whether it's music, whether it's tattoo artists, whether it's artists, whatever, everything that Raza's into, bro, we want to cover that shit, bro. So yeah, yeah. anything you want to let the people know where they can find you, uh, where they can see your work, man. Yeah, yeah. Follow me on Deleon Inks underscore 92620 on Instagram. Feel free to check out my work and give me a follow. All right, that was something, man. Pura cultura, baby. We out. Así soy yo y no cambiaré como un guerrero. Lo que es mío, cuidaré. Sé muy bien que algún día con la muerte estaré. Yo, what up, man? Pura cultura out here at the tattoo convention in Minneapolis, man. We out here with the homie Smiley, my tocayo Smiley, bro. Smiley, let him know what's up. What's going on? What's going on? We over here in Minneapolis. Smiley. Yo, representing Minnesota, bro, the homie yeah, out here yeah. doing his thing. Who was the first person you did a tattoo on, man? Myself, and then my homies, you know what I'm saying? I'm, uh, I was banging, gang banging, and tattooing my homies, just doing a bunch of gang shit. Okay, okay. How old were you when you did your first professional tattoo, man, and were you nervous? Oh, I was hella nor nervous, bro. Uh, my first professional, like, in shop, I was probably, like, 20. It was my cousin, my cousin Primo. He, uh, he was already working at the shop, and he got me a job at the shop. And then, yeah, it just went off from there. Okay. That's what's up, man. What, what kind of tattoos do you specialize in, man? I like my, I like specialize in lettering and then uh, black and gray Chicano work, Aztec work, stuff like that, you know what I mean? Um, I'm really starting to venture off into neo-traditional. It's colorful shit, you know. In Minnesota, you got to really get into your color work, man, because that's what, that's, what that's what these Minnesota folk like. <laughs> you gotta be where the money's at, man. Right. Is there any recommendations you want you would do to like someone that's new to like I mean that someone's gonna get their first tattoo? Like, is there any recommendations or something that they need to think about before they go they go for it? Yeah, I would say do your research. Know the artist that you're going to. Um, you know, look around. You know, shop around. Ask 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 questions. Ask ask hella questions. Uh, make sure to eat a good meal before the day before drink plenty of water the day before the day of and Just going with the set mind. It's all a mindset man. I tell people that all the time. It's a mindset I mean you're going there with a the positive mind. You know what you're gonna put yourself through you should be good You should be solid Dope. What's the longest session you've ever done man? Uh, 20 20 hours in one sitting. Yeah, this dude. He got both of his sleeves in one sitting um, This is a while ago. It's probably like Six years ago, he was just like, hey, man, I got I got three grand for you. I got three grand for you if you want to do both of my sleeves. And I said, dale, let's do it. <laughs> Yo, it's hard to say no to that money, man. 
Yo, man, I appreciate you being out here representing for the city, bro. Representing for the state, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, letting people know that Raza in Minnesota, bro. We out here representing, bro. Uh, anything you want to say, bro, where they can find you, where they can check out your work? Yeah. You can check me out at Blasted Inc. at the Mall of America. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Come, come hit me up. You want some lettering done? I, I love doing face tattoos. I try to get people to do face tattoos, but, you know, I think, I think tattoos... Where they stem from is like fuck the system, fuck society. So you know you got to keep that keep that in mind too. You know. Appreciate that, bro. Yo, pura cultura, baby. We out here representing Minnesota. Raza out here in the Midwest, baby. We out, man. De la calle soy en ella Yo, qué onda, man? Aquí estamos en Minneapolis, man. The tattoo convention. Aquí estamos con el compa, bro. De Nueva York, bro. Introducete, bro. Dile a la gente de dónde eres. Uh, soy, de, soy mexicano del Estado de México, de Catepec, representando. Uh, me llamo Adrián Aguilar y tatúo en Brooklyn, Nueva York. Brooklyn, Nueva York, bro. Eso está chingón, bro. Eso está chingón. ¿Cuánto tiempo has estado haciendo tatuajes? Ya casi 10 años he estado tatuando ahí con la banda. Ahí. ¿Dónde empezaste? ¿Aquí en Brooklyn? En Bro I mean, ¿En Brooklyn o en México? En Nueva York, en Nueva York. Ahí comencé. Aquí tengo ya casi unos 16 años. Ya llevo 10 años tatuando. 10 años tatuando, bro. ¿Cómo empezaste? ¿Qué, ¿Con quién empezaste? Like, I don't know. Yo solo una vez fui a un tattoo shop to, uh, para hacerme un arete y vi al tatuador y me gustó y dije, voy a comprar mi máquina en eBay, compré mi kit y empecé a tatuar a mi papá, a su esposa, amigos gratis y así practiqué. Y ahora mira, mira aquí estoy. Bro, esos son los chingones, bro, los que están listos para apoyar, los que quieren empezar algo nuevo, bro. El sol sale para todos. Si tú quieres empezar algo, tienes que echarle 100% ganas. No desesperarte. O sea, la paciencia es la llave. Porque empezar en algo este, cuesta trabajo. O sea, you know, like, take time. It takes time, bro. I appreciate that, bro. Um, cuando estás haciendo tatuajes, bro, todavía te pones un poco nervioso. Ya, ya eres un profesional de los meros meros, bro. Me pongo nervioso cuando hago tatuajes pequeñitos en línea. Like, like lines, circles. Es cuando me pongo nervioso, porque necesito que quede bien el círculo, que no se vea como un huevo. Pero ya tatuajes grandes, ya, ya es un poquito más fácil, ya no te pones nervioso. Ya sabes como que lo pega, ya sabes qué vas a hacer. Pero tatuajes pequeños, así como líneas así, líneas así como bien finitas y eso, ahí sí me pongo nervioso todavía. ¿Y qué, qué, qué estilo de tatuajes um, te you specialize in? Ah, me gusta hacer más este, black and gray. Ah, más, me gusta el chicano style, el realismo. Ah, pero hago de todo, hago de todo, ya. Black, uh, de todo, todo. Órale, bro. ¿Y cómo está la cultura allá en Brooklyn, bro? Oh, mucho mexicano de Puebla, Puebla York, le decimos Puebla York allá. Shout out to Puebla York, bro. Nosotros somos de Morelos, nuestra jefita era de, de, de Puebla, bro. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Mucho amor para la gente de Puebla, yeah, man. Yo tengo aquí mis homies, uh, Ray y mi homie Steven, uh, ellos son de Puebla. Eh, pero pues, en Nueva York, Puebla York, allí es de Puebla, ahí encuentras... De todos lados allá de Puebla encuentras. Yeah. Eso está chingón porque en, en Nueva York de Puebla, aquí en Minnesota, en Minneapolis, somos de Morelos, bro. Ah. Representando la cultura, bro. Todo, mexicanos en todos lados. El mexicano, tú lo vas allá hasta en el rincón más lejano de donde tú te imaginas. El mexicano anda en todos lados, ¿tú no? Sí, mo. bro. Cuéntanos, güey, ¿qué es el tipo de tatuaje más como crazy que has hecho a, a una persona, bro? ¿El tatuaje más qué? ¿Más crazy? Más crazy, bro. ¿Qué? La, a don, la área donde lo hiciste oh, fue una señora uh, ya se, hace años fue una señora como una como boricua uh, se hizo una mariposa pero la mariposa el cuerpo tenía que ser como un pene un dick so ella quería el dick pero con alas de mariposa y se lo que se lo puso aquí en el lower back okay. y pues a mí cuando yo le me dijo quiero esto y yo le dije segura y dice yeah porque me gusta me gusta mucho coger dice le digo, no, neta, le digo, de verdad, porque es para, es para siempre. Dice, yeah, 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 I wanna, I wanna get that one. I say, fuck it, let's do it. Like, if you pay, I, I do it, you know. ¿Y ella te dio la idea o te dio la imagen también? No, ella llegó y me dice, quiero, una maripo quiero estas alas de mariposa, pero en medio quiero que le pongas un, un, un pene, dice, un dick. ¿Y eso salió de tu imaginación o qué pasó, bro? No, no, no yo, yo, ya, yo tuve que buscar una foto ahí en Google, you know, like, like un tatú, un tatu, no una foto de, de alguien, un tatú ya hecho de algo así y ya lo, lo hice así. Bro. ¿Y qué es? ¿Le gustó el final el, no, el producto? Ella, ella estaba encantada, like, ella dice, oh, shit, it looks so good, and, 
I say, oh, well, for you, but like, he looks weird. Like, you know, like, eh, I don't know. But, Eso está chingón, bro. Hay un tipo de tatuajes que, que no haces, bro, like, tatuajes de caras o ta, ta, ah, cosas que, que quieren decir. No, el tatuaje que no me gusta hacer son los uh, minimalistas, like, uh, mini tattoos, like, very, so many details, like, realistas, okay. pero pequeños. I, I don't like that one. No, like that one. It, it doesn't look good later, you know? Like, okay. no se miran bien. Órale, bro, yo. Entonces están, están allá en Brooklyn, New York, representa, representando la cultura, bro. Cuando quieran ir, estamos en Brooklyn, New York, en Benson Hoods, a 7301 18 Avenida. Ahí estamos, ahí este, nos pueden contactar, cualquier tatuaje, cualquier estilo, cualquier tipo de piel, no importa si es blanco, moreno, negro, lo que sea. ¿Y tu Instagram o, o TikTok o algo? Oh, tenemos Instagram, es este, este es mi Instagram, right here, Sting Up. Para cualquier consulta, ahí me pueden tirar. Me gusta mucho el anime también, ahí traje una, una referencia, pero hacemos de todo acá, ahí cuando quieran. Órale, bro, muchas gracias por representar la cultura, bro. Gracias a ustedes por la, la oportunidad y que siga creciendo esto. Órale, y ahí bro. me pasan su canal para seguirlos también. Simón, Simón. Pura cultura out here, man. We in Minneapolis representing the culture, latinos, chicanos y mexicanos, man. We out, baby. Ando marihuana tomando cerveza y ron. Siempre andamos al millón, bien puestos para el fiestón. Nunca bajamos avión, mejor pichate otro blog. Yo no pido permiso, yo mejor pido perdón. Yo, what up, mi gente? This is Smiley from Pura Cultura, baby. We out here at the Minnesota Tattoo Convention. We out here with the homie. Jose González, para servirles. Dile a la gente de, de dónde eres, bro. Pues originalmente somos de Salamanca, Guanajuato. Este, crecimos ahí en, en California. En Arvin, California, somos del, del sur, este, nos movimos aquí desde hace cuatro años y aquí estamos ubicando plebe. Aquí representando a Minnesota, bro. Cuéntanos, bro, ¿cuánto tiempo has estado, has estado haciendo tatuajes? Pues realmente eh, yo empecé cuando tenía 13 años. Eh, cuando pues normalmente pues uno so, somos de la calle, ¿verdad? So, yo crecí pues en la calle con, con mis hermanos, con unos compas y ahí rayando a la gente como, como puro picking. Este, le, le agarré una, una, una aguja de, de, de coser a mi mamá y este, uh, compré una tinta de, de, de la Indian Ink que, que, que mucha gente la sabe, la, es, es Hager, ¿verdad? Es una, es una marca y este, la puedes encontrar ahí en Michaels. Pues usé esa, le empecé a rayar a la gente. Me, me caí por un rato, desde los 16 hasta los 21, pero empecé con una máquina de, um, um, de la, como, que construye uno pues de la calle, si ¿sí me entiendes, okay. como, o sea, no, no un equipo co profesional como uno mira aquí, pero este, eh, es uno como una homemade machine, como le dicen, este, que, que le quitan un motorcito y, y, y Prácticamente eso es como un, un, este, un rotor, una rotary, lo, como lo que uno usa en, en este tiempo, ¿verdad? Yeah. Pero este, pues en, ese, en ese tiempo mi carnal me, me, me dio esta máquina y me dijo, hey, ¿sabes qué? Fuck it, fue a los 21, 21 años, me dijo, ¿sabes qué? Raya la gente, güey, y fuck it, a ver hasta dónde llegas, güey. Y pues aquí todavía rayamos, güey. Eh, fucking 15 years later, homie, as, as strong, homie. Hasta tenemos una, una locación aquí en North St. Paul, aquí en 6th Street. Estamos, eh, uh, uh, se llama G-Class Art Collective y estamos um, ubicados aquí en North St. Paul, como le estoy diciendo, y, y este, apenas eh, um, estamos desde un año y medio este, a, a, con las a, puertas abiertas. ¿Qué es, qué es un, un tatuaje que, que fue un poco raro, un poco exato, exótico, en una parte rara donde... Donde la gente, you know, I don't know, no es muy común, bro. Pues la mera neta, en estos tiempos, güey, todo es común, güey. La, la neta, eh, eh, al chile, güey. Eh, todo es común, güey. La gente, todos van a tener su pinche gusto. Yo tengo mi gusto, nadie me lo quita, y así como usted. Nadie, eh, tú, tú, tú tienes tu gusto, nadie te lo va a quitar. Y, y, y miras toda esta gente, todos tienen su... Es, es un propio mundo, ¿sí me entiendes? No hay, no hay nada eh, diferente, raro, porque cada quien dice, eh, ¿sabes qué? Yo lo, yo, yo lo este, tengo en mente y yo no me lo voy a poner, ¿se ¿sí me entiende? Pues yo, 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 yo nunca pensé te, eh, tener la, 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 la cabeza tatuada, ¿sí me entiendes? Pero ya estando en el ambiente, pues me, me, me rayé toda la pinche maceta, ¿sí me entiendes? 
pero eh, eh, este, la cara sí no, o sea, eh, este es un perfil, ¿sí me entiendes? Es yeah. lo que la gente mira y es, this is the money bit maker, bro, yeah. you know? Siempre habla uno derecha la flecha con la gente y, y este, pues si ya lo mira uno malandro a la verga, pues es como que, la gente. Eh, ¿sí me entiendes? No, Pero, no quieres espantar el dinero, bro. And we've been walking around this whole thing today, bro. I see a lot of hustlers, a lot, I see a lot of people ready to make money, ready to make a name for themselves, bro. So I think it's really dope what you guys are doing, bro. It's motivation to the whole community, bro, porque la raza, nos tenemos que ver más que nomás trabajando en una factoría and a warehouse, bro. We got talents, way que otra gente no tiene, way, and we gotta make money off of that shit, bro. Así, así es. De todos de todos, al final del día, uno tiene su, 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 su plan, uno, uno tiene una visión para sí mismo, ¿sí me entiendes? So, si tú te miras como un tatuador, le, le, vas, a, le vas a seguir. Le, le, you're going to pursue that dream, you know yeah. what I mean? Yo, yo no, nunca me miraba como tatuador. Yo nada más dije, ¿sabes qué? Yo tengo esta, la técnica para esta madre. I'm going to keep going, I'm going to see where it takes me. You know what I mean? Como les digo, like, yo, yo, yo andaba en, 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 agarré mi clase y todo el pedo, ¿verdad? Uh, I started trucking it, bro. I went OTR. Um, para los que saben lo que, lo que es OTR, ¿verdad? Y este, al último, este, me fui para Texas. Y este, uh, you know, I had my, 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 uh, my hazmat, my tankers. I started hauling crude oil. Este, my, my dream was to, uh, you know, uh, like, oh, like build up a fleet. So um, I, I, I started buying trucks. And I started running trucks. And I got drivers. Y todo el pedo. And, you know, that was a, a stepping stone for me to, to get to the next level, you know what I mean, in tattooing. Because my passion, my first passion has always been tattooing. And it will always be tattooing, you know what I'm saying, until, probably until the day I die. But my second passion was truck driving, you know what I mean? Why? Because, fuck, you know, like, everybody needs a trucker. In this nation, everybody needs a trucker. If you're a class A driver, you already know what I'm talking about. You can go, if you got a, 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 like a good driving record, you can go any fucking company. They're gonna get you. Bro, you are a true hustler, bro, and a real motivation to us, bro, and to a lot of our listeners, bro. I'm sure you're motivating them out there to get on this shit, bro. Like you said, you were trucking, making your money, but then you found you, you came back to your true passion to tattoo him. I just want to say thank you, bro, for chopping it up with us, yes, man. Sir. And also representing for Minnesota, bro. There's, there's raza out here in Minnesota. We out here representing La Cultura, Mexicanos, Chicanos, all that good stuff, man. Let them know where they can find you, bro. Hey, bro, so my name's Jose Gonzalez, and you can find me at uh, North, North St. Paul right here in G-Class Art Collective. Um, so we come from um, Arvin, California. Uh, we've been here for like four years. Uh, we slang in that fucking black and gray realism. I specialize in black uh, in uh, lettering also. So when those they, whenever you guys want to pull up, pull up. My IG is Jose uh, at Jose underscore G underscore tattoos, and you know, y'all see my work right there. And pues nomás para toda la gente que you know you y'all got dreams, hopes, and dreams and shit like just like me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm no, I, I'm nowhere near where I want to be, but you know what I'm saying? Just like y'all hear my story, I'm gonna keep pushing, and I'm sure y'all keep pushing. This ain't, this ain't, this ain't the, uh, uh, the end. This is just the beginning of somewhere where you want to get to. You know what I'm saying? So, animo raza, and you know what I mean? No se me a la verga, puro pa adelante. Puro pa adelante, man. Shout out to all our raza out here representing for the cultura, man. Midwest, Minnesota, baby. We out. Del pantalón bien aguato. Ojos tumbados, los más buscados, rifa la santa, así que calmato, todo el terreno está bien gordo. This is Pura Cultura, man, we're here checking in with our homie. Johnny G. From the, what's your tattoo shop called, bro? No Joke Tattoo Studio. No Joke Tattoo Studios, man. Um, what city are you um, visiting from? We're from White Bear Lake. White Bear Lake, so we got a local in the house, man. By the way, I love White Bear Lake, that's a beautiful city, man. Um, how long you been doing tattoos? I've started when I was younger, I want to say since 2007, but professionally since 2015. 2015, man, that's a good minute, bro. Um, what inspired you to get into this line of work? Really more my friends. They were around. They were artists themselves. They were doing tattoos because they were a little older than me. And they pretty much took me under and guided me how to make machines and how to do some line work here and there. Build me to where I am now. Okay. 
So is that something that you that you started doing when you were younger? Did you like were already drawing? Did you kind of like art already? Yeah, I started when I was in high school. It was uh, I was like 15 years old when I started tattooing. But before that, I was drawing every day, all the time. Yeah. So it takes that it takes that dedication to start. You know, actually working on your art, drawing, having a technique, and having some love for it, right? Yeah. You got a passion in, in art and stuff like that. Yeah, you gotta you gotta hustle too. You gotta get get work where, where you can, cause uh, that's pretty much where it led me to. You know, it, it went from like doing it from an every now and then thing for fun to doing it every single day, every day. Like everybody wanted tattoos. So, yeah. So, you know, that, that, that hustle mentality and it's getting you some money in your pockets. Is, has this been like your um, income for, for many years already? Yeah, yeah, I've been getting booked up for weeks and months, honestly. So I can't never stop now. Oh, it's shit. Just keep on going from now on. Yeah. And, and is this business kind of like the barber business where they have like a relationship with their clients that. They can't go to another barber. I mean, another <laughs> tattoo artist. The kind of yeah, we share we share a lot of similarities with other people that are in like the trade business, also like barbers, tattoo artists, hairstylists. We all kind of share the same similarities. Things as, as far as like rules with like rent, we all got to pay our rent fees, and yeah, you know, we also build relationships with our clients and. Some artists, as you know, how they get, you know, when they go to someone else, and that's how it is with barbers too. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. we try not to, you know, trip too much about that. And if they want to, I'll tell them like, hey, we got other artists here that can do your tattoo. So. That's what's up, man. Um, what is one of the the biggest like struggles in this line of work, man? Is it like something that it's not easy, so people can know this is not just like a walk in the park biz. What is one of the things that you struggle with? Well, one of the main struggles that a lot of artists deal with in this industry would be like, say, putting yourself out there, letting yourself be known. You got to have a word, you got to have a mouth to like attract people, get people to come and see you. You know, I know a lot of people who are shy and don't like to talk and don't want to pretty much advertise and promote themselves. And that's the thing. You gotta be out there. You gotta really, really want it and show that you're determined for this kind of stuff. So therefore, you'll have no slow days at all. Even if it's slow season, you'll be busy working. So that's one of the struggles. One of one of the main struggles is you know, word of mouth. Mm. So it's kind of word of mouth, and also you gotta sell your work as well too. So you're also your own sales person. Yeah, put your reputation on the line. You know. Mm. I like that, man. Um, you know, some people like to ask these questions, man. As as far as some people have asked us these questions, what is one of the wildest tattoos that you've actually done? Wildest ones? There's quite a lot of them, honestly. You can share a couple with us. Uh, I want to say I did a Andy under the foot on some guy. A Andy under the, the foot? Word Andy, like Toy oh. Story? Oh, okay, okay, okay. It, it was, it was... That's not too wild. <laughs> We're thinking more like private parts, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah those. Yeah, they come every now and then, you know, just get somebody's name over their, you know, part. But nothing too how do you how do you feel about when somebody asks for a tattoo in a private spot? Is that is that normal to you? Is it all work or do you still kinda get nervous? It's normal. We try to, you know, put our professional face on when it comes to stuff like that. You know, we know how to like word it and either decline it or accept it in a way, you know, to where they're not feeling offended and really, like, oh yeah, this guy doesn't want to do it, you know. Yeah. That's why we got female artists at the shop too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also, a question that's been coming around is, what's the longest session that you've had to do in one day? In one day, there's been a whole bunch honestly there's some where i start at like 10 o'clock in the morning and end at like 10 o'clock at night 12 hour sessions 10 hour sessions you know we go hard we got to put overtime on it you know yeah. is this kind of work um hard on the family i don't know if you got a family and kids is it, is, is it harder to do this work when you trying to balance things out uh, it can get that way sometimes, but as long as you have somebody or the family that supports you with like, you know, things you do in life and they understand and, you know, you can co-parent, co-work with anything, keep things cordial, 
then you know it, it, it can it can make it work. There's people that have fiancés and stuff that do the same line of work as them, so they have no type of issue whatsoever. And together they rise, and together they you know con con cure things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. dope, man. Um, as far as any advice that you would want to give into artists that are thinking of getting in this game, man, what's the first steps to um, to take to get into becoming a tattoo artist and getting in a shop? It takes a lot of patience, for sure. I let people know, beginners who have never done a tattoo that want to come into the shop and right away start tattooing, I tell them it takes years. Sometimes the minimum is like two years in order for you to start actually tattooing skin, but it's all about time, dedication, and patience because you gotta come to the shop even on days you're not doing nothing but just sitting there drawing, learning, observing the rest of the people. So big patience on that part right there because if somebody who can't stand being there for that time, you know, they're not gonna proceed into going to a next shop and be like, hey, I was just at this shop for this many hours. Can I continue my hours here? They're not gonna do that. They're gonna make you start all over again. So pick a spot, make sure you like the people, the artists, and then build a relationship with them. And then you'll have a long run, good team with you. Man, we appreciate that advice, bro. We appreciate that advice. Yo, and this is Pura Cultura, and we just checked in with our boy. If you could let him know your Instagram handle, and then also let him know about your shop. Yeah, if you can find me on Instagram, at Tatman Johnny, all together, one word. Uh, we're located in White Bear Lake, 3611 White Bear Avenue. We're like four or five minutes away from the Maplewood Mall. So we're not too far away. You'll be able to see us there. We're open Monday through Friday, 11 to 8 p.m. We take in walk-ins all the time, too. Appreciate you, bro. Yo, we are here with the homie, and this is Pura Cultura, and we checking out. Peace. Yo, what up, me head to this smiley from Pura Cultura, man. We out here at the Minneapolis Tattoo Convention. We're here with the homie. Chris. Chris, Chris. Let us know about what you do, man. What, what your company and all that, man. Uh, I own a No Joke Tattoo Studio uh, from White Bear Lake. So, tattoo artist. Um, we expanded over there. So, um, we've got, uh, I believe, seven artists right now. Seven artists, man. Represent White Bear Lake, representing Minnesota, baby. Uh, did you start out in White Bear Lake, or how do you end up here in Minnesota? Where are you originally from, bro? You know, I'm from Texas. Um, moved up to Minnesota when I was uh, about five. Um, lived with my grandmother, um, and uh, just began drawing when I was a little kid. You know, interested in it, in drawing, um, and moved on to. Uh, starting to tattoo all my friends. So you got into drawing, bro. How how did you build up that confidence or the idea to start tattooing your friends, man? Tattooing my fingers first when I was 13. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tattooed my fingers when I was 13, learned how to make a machine, and then started tearing them all up from there, you know? Yeah, homie said he learned how to make a machine and tattooed his fingers. Usually we we making little fake tattoos with pens at 13. Yeah. <laughs> we about to was doing the real thing, man. Right. Yo, man, like, did anyone motivate you or inspire you to get into this, or this just was an idea that you knew you had to get into? You know, I think uh, it was just uh, what I received from my art. You know, I would get people telling me how good it was, just my colorings. You know, so it just it made me want to do more and better and become better in life at it. So I think that was the drive for it. And it just was constant, you know, always getting that. And I, I wanted to feel that from people, you know, so. That's what's up, man. Like, what type of t tattoo style do you specialize in? Or are you kind of all around artists? Um, I like to do black and gray, you know, uh, realism, uh, black and gray realism. That's what, that's, that's my thing, you know. But I will do anything, whatever the customer wants. Okay, that's what's up. Is there any tattoos that you don't do, like any spots on the body that you don't do? Um, the only thing I won't do is a spot that I know is not going to, the skin isn't going to take it, you know? If, if the, and if the client wants and they're willing to pay for it, I'm, I'm down. That's my job, you know? What spot is it that the skin doesn't take it, man? 
uh, bottom of the foot, uh, palms of the hand. Uh, you know, it'll come out, and then they're going to come back and want to get touched up. And What is the perks of being a tattoo artist, man? It's when, when it's something you love to do, you're an artist, it's, you don't have to feel like you're going to work. For me, I love it, you know. Um, the, uh, and being a shop owner, being able to uh, show uh, people how to do it, um, give some guidance, um, it feels good. You know, coming where I come from, it, it's a good feeling, doing the right thing. So, yeah. That's what's up, man, because, you know, some people ain't born for the regular 9 to 5, man, so it's good to let people know that there's a different avenue, whether you want to be a barber, whether you want to be a tattoo artist. You know, we out here trying to be podcaster full time, man. Sure. We want to find a better way that, that makes us happy, man. Yeah. So that's why we like to let people know, like, if, if a regular 9 to 5 punching in ain't for you, there's other ways out here, man. Absolutely. What's something that you would recommend for someone that's ready to take that next leap and be a shop owner? Be ready for it, you know, and uh, stay focused because it's, if you lose focus, you're going to lose your dream. You know, this was a dream for me since I was a kid. And um, when I got to the point and was ready to take the step, it takes dedication and uh, motivation. But you got to you got to stay on it. If you don't, it, you can easily let it slip away, you know, so. Yo, that's what's up, man. We out here all chasing our dreams, man. So we, we like to talk to people like you that are chasing your dreams, that are living your dreams and made them decisions, bro, because we out here trying to motivate La Raza, bro. We trying to motivate the people, bro. What's your background, bro? Were you born in Texas? I was born in Texas. Uh, my grandma moved uh, myself and my brothers uh, up to Minnesota when I was about five. Um, grew up on the west side of St. Paul. Uh, got mixed up in all the bullshit you know growing up as a teen but this is what this is what got me out of it you know this is it my my art and uh and my beautiful uh wife over there you know she it all come together and um and uh it feels good it feels good to leave everything else behind you know and and move towards the right in the right direction so oh man yo i appreciate you sharing that with us man we're trying to like I said, motivate la gente, bro. We are representing Pura Cultura, bro. Latinos, Chicanos, Mexicanos, bro. Find a better way, man, because we all, you know, us, también, we grew up in the in North Minneapolis, bro, rough area of the city, but we trying to show people that it's a better way, bro, that even, it don't matter where you grew up, that doesn't determine where you're going to end up, you know what I mean? So I appreciate you taking the time, bro. Yeah, bro. Let the people know where they can find you, social media, and all that good stuff, man. Yeah, uh, you can look us up, uh, uh, No Joke Tattoo, on uh, Facebook. Um, you can come to the shop, call the shop, you know. No Joke Tattoo Studio, White Bear Lake. That's what's up, man. Minnesota, stand up, baby. We out. No cambiaré, así soy, así me morí. Marihuana, marihuana y más tequila. Andamos bien. Yo, what up, mi gente? This is Smiley from Pura Cultura, bro, checking in at the Villain Arts Tattoo Arts Festival. I'm chilling right here with the homie. Also Gonzalez. Also Gonzalez, bro. Also Gonzalez, bro. Let the people know where you're from. Well, I'm based off in Burnsville, um, Minneapolis, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Born and raised in Minnesota? Well, no, I was born in Cali, but right. from here. I, I, this is my home. That's what's up. That's what's up. How long you been tattooing, bro? Um, I want to say like seven, eight years before my son was born. So like, yeah, like seven years. Seven years. Yeah. How you get started? Well, I mean, uh, first it was just drawing, you know, like portraits, and um, then somebody just told me to pick up a machine, and and I got to it. Just picked up a machine and practiced on homies and whoever wanted to get scarred up or whatever, and. Um, yeah, just that way and then got to where I'm at. How long you been doing this professionally, man? Professionally, I want to say three years. Three years? Oh, man. What's what's probably like the best thing you like about being a tattoo artist? Mm. Um, man, there's a lot, but if I were to say one thing, I don't know. I guess just uh how you say the, um, the creativity? The creativity, man. Do you get a lot of freedom in this industry, bro, being a tattoo artist, like with your time and all that? 
Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I think with any like self business, you know, um, you can make your own time, but it, you know, you're running your own business, you're always working, regardless. So I'm always working. I keep myself busy. Alright, so when you're not doing tats, are you practicing your artwork, drawing stuff up? Um, well, at first I did when I was starting. I would practice. I would watch videos, whatever I could take in. Um, now I seldomly um, try to um, practice in some way. Um, but honestly, whatever free time I get, I try to spend it with my kids. Orale, bro. And what kind of tattoos do you specialize in, bro, or do you do all, anything? Um, I mainly just stick to black and gray. Um, not really realism. I, I do realism, but black and gray, anything. Um, I try to do some color. It's not really my thing, but mainly black and gray. Any people that you look up to in this industry, bro? Um, really, whoever I mentor. So um, I used to work under uh, Jose Gonzalez. Uh, I, I look up to him and his work. He's really good at what he does. Um, and yeah, I mean, just people out that I've worked for. I mean, there's some like heavy hitters out there, like uh, Nico and let's see, like flocks or whatnot, but yeah, just the people I've worked for, mentored, probably Jose. Orale, bro. What's the craziest, if you could share, what's the craziest tattoo you've done on somebody, man? Craziest, like, if I were to say like, mm, honestly, I don't do a lot of crazy tattoos. <laughs> I mean, there there's some like, like chicks butt cheeks probably, not, not really a lot. He's that, like, that's nothing for me. That's a regular Tuesday for me. Well, I, I haven't, I haven't done like a lot lately. But when I first started, I was tattooing a lot of butt cheeks. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why, but I, I just did. <laughs> they just came to me for that. That's what's up, man. Yo, man. Well, we out here, bro. We a podcast from the city, bro. Trying to represent the cultura, bro. So if, anyone and everyone that's representing our culture in a dope way, we'd like to get out here and talk to them. And just highlight the, highlight our culture, bro, because I think we got a really dope culture, bro. Yeah, we do. So I just want to say thank you for chopping it up with us, bro. And just if you could let people know where they can find you at, man. Um, dang. I, and I just moved into the shop, uh, the spot I'm at. Um, but you can find me in Burnsville. Um, it's a suite. It's a, it's in Salons by JC. Um, damn, if I knew it, I know it's in Aldridge Street or Avenue. What's, by Target. what's your IG? Oh, um, tattoos underscore by underscore also. All right, man. We'll make sure that we add that to the video, bro. So people that are here local, they can find you and get some work done by you, bro. Yeah, definitely. Again, thanks again, bro, for rocking with us, man. Yeah. Yo, this is Pura Cultura checking in with the homies from... We're from Grind Time Tattoo in Anaheim, California. Anaheim, California. What's your name, bro? My name's Harvey. Harvey and Tommy. Okay. Um, how long you guys been tattooing, man? Uh, I've been tattooing for a good, like, almost eight years. Eight years? Yeah. Oh, four or five years. Four or five years. Is that tattooing professionally, or is that tattooing from the beginning? That's tattooing, like, professionally, yeah. From the beginning. From the beginning. From the beginning. From the beginning? Yeah. What was your first tattoo that you ever gave? First tattoo was on my primo uh, Bowser, rest in peace. I put "fuck a bitch" on his arm. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. yeah that's pretty standard in the hood, right there. It was yeah, "fuck a bitch." Yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah. How old were you? Do you remember? I was 17. 17. Okay, that's what's up, bro. What motivated you guys to get in this tattoo game, man? Uh, we've been in the art, like just in the. I started doing graffiti when I was young, you know. So it just, it just evolved, you know, through time and shit. Okay. Being busted, you know, drawing and all that, cool. but. Now it feeds the family, you know, so thankfully. That's what's up, bro. Uh, yeah. What motivated you? Uh, I mean, I've always been a part of art. All my brothers, my dad, you know, tattoos, draws, everything. Everything about art, music, I do it. So by him mentioning this feeds the fam, is this your guys' full-time job? Yeah, full-time, brother. Yeah, that's all we do, 100%. So, yeah, I'm saying that for the people that might be interested in making this their profession, their career. Yeah. This is something that takes a few years like what what's the what's the beginning steps to get into the tattoo game i mean it's like everything else brother you know you just got to put in the work put in the time practice you know market yourself but 
more than anything, you just gotta have patience and you gotta have be consistent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. The best thing you can do is challenge yourself. There you go. Tell yourself that you can do it and do it. Sit down and do it. That's the only way it's gonna happen. Yeah. Did you guys have any mentors at any point? I've always looked up to my my cousin. My cousin passed away a few a few uh, a few months ago. My cousin Bowser. That's okay. my cousin right there. So uh, R.I.P. Man. My first tattoo on him. Gave him my first machine and all that. So I always picked up game from him. And you know now there's a lot more other people where I pick up game from. But that was like one of my first guys who I started picking up game from. That's what's up, man. Yeah. You ever have a mentor at all? I no. I'm. I mean, everybody here at the shop is my mentor. Okay. Basically. Okay. Okay. That's what's up, man. Um. A question is like, what's your wildest tattoo that somebody's asked you to do, bro? Is there something crazy that's out of the norm? It wasn't too crazy, but it was a group of dudes that they all came in to get uh, matching hooks, fishing hook tattoos on the butt cheek. <laughs> you know White dudes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I kind of suspected that. Yeah. How about you, man? I haven't done anything weird yet. Nothing weird yet? Nothing, not yet. Okay, it's, it's coming, because we, we, we heard some, man. Man, well, I appreciate your guys' time, man. Again, can you give a shout-out from your shop? Uh, we're at Grind Time Tattoo in Anaheim, California. Likewise. Okay, man. Nice to meet you, Vatos, man. Nice to meet you guys. Yo, this is Pura Cultura, man, and we're out. Peace. Yo, what's up, mi gente? This is Smiley out here. We're back at the Villain Arts. We're chilling right here con el compa. Francisco Isai, el Kiko. Orale, Francisco, ¿de dónde eres, bro? De Zacatecas. Zacatecas en la casa, baby. Um, ¿Cuánto tiempo has estado haciendo tatuajes? Como 25 años. ¿Cinco años? 25 años. Oh, 25 años, bro, wow. Uh, ¿Cuántos años tenías cuando empezaste? Como unos 18 años. ¿Y cómo empezaste? ¿Quién te, quién te metió a, este, a esta línea de trabajo? Empecé con la hechiza, con la máquina hechiza, con la cuerda de guitarra, la clásica que había. ¿Quién te enseñó a hacer ese, ese tipo de máquinas? Un amigo, un amigo que estuvo en la, en la, en la cárcel. ¿Y eso empezó en México o aquí? Aquí. Ahora, ¿Y dónde vives ahora? Vivo en Edison, Illinois. Eh, Illinois. ¿Y cómo está la um, tattoo culture? ¿Cómo está la cultura de tatuajes en Illinois? Pues está bien, está bien. Hay, hay mucha, hay, hay mucha, hay mucho chap. Hay mucha cultura, hay mucha raza latina rayando allá. So, una, un estilo que es bien popular es el estilo chicano. Um, hay mucha gente ya buscando ese estilo allá en Illinois para que agarren tatuajes de ese estilo. Pues nosotros siempre hemos tenido ese estilo, el estilo chicano, mexicano. Yeah. Sí, pues casi el color casi no lo trabajamos. Puro, puro el, el black and gray. Órale, órale. Uh, a la gente que quiere empezar a hacer tatuajes, ¿qué es algo que les recomendarías? Pues yo les recomiendo ahorita que, que se agarren la, la piel sintética, es lo, lo nuevo que hay. Porque antes, pues antes empezábamos rayando a los compas y pues todos los madreábamos, ¿verdad? Pero ahorita pues hay la chance de la piel sintética y pues es lo que les recomiendo. Ahora es lo bueno de la tecnología, ¿eh? um, Y alguien que quiera agarrar su primer tatuaje, ¿qué es, qué es algo que le recomendarías hacer antes de ir a agarrar un tatuaje? No, pues... Pues que lo piense, ¿no? Uh, que piense lo que quiere hacerse para que después no se va a arrepentir. Yeah. ¿Has tenido a veces que la gente se arrepiente luego, luego de agarrarse un tatuaje? Sí, han ido a los ocho días a que quieren que se los tape, pero pues tiene que sanar primero. ¿Y cobras mismo precio para cubrir el tatuaje que ya hiciste? Depende, depende del tatuaje, depende. Si quiere otro que está más laborioso, pues se le cobra un poquillo más. ¿Qué es algo que te gusta o qué es lo mejor que te gusta hacer un tattoo artist? No, pues a mí me gusta hacer pues, de todo, todo. No, pero, ¿Qué es lo que te gusta? ¿Tu schedule? ¿El dinero que ganas? ¿La libertad de hacer lo que quieras? Pues aparte del dinero que gano, me gusta, me gusta, me gusta, me gusta tarrayar. Y pues es, es, yo pienso que pues ahora sí que es mi pasatiempo favorito, ¿no? Y es un jale que me gusta. No, pues está chingón, bro. Quiero dar gracias por tomar un tiempo para hablar con nosotros, bro. Um, y como estamos diciendo, nos, nos llamamos Pura Cultura. Queremos representar toda la cultura aquí, man. So, gracias otra vez, bro. ¿A dónde te pueden encontrar? En Edison, Illinois. En Edison, Illinois. Francisco Isais Muñoz, mi Instagram. ¿Cuál es tu Instagram? Francisco Isais Muñoz. Órale. We are here, mi gente. Me la fumaré. 
Yo, what up? This Smiley checking in right here with the homie. Raul Sanchez. Raul Sanchez. That's what's up. We Sanchez too, bro. So. Oh, that's right. All love, all love. <laughs> Yo, uh, bro, let people know where you're from, man. I'm from Chino, California. Chino, California, man. How's, how's the culture out there, man? Oh, man. It's great. Heavy, right? Heavy. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of heavy hitters out there. Dope, dope, man. How long you been uh, doing tattoos, bro? Man, I've been tattooing for about 23 years. 23 years, man. How old were you when you started? I was like 17, bro. 17. Yeah. Who was the first victim to your uh, to your, to your work, man? It was my siblings. Your siblings? Yeah, my little sister, my brother, myself. How did, how did it turn out, man? Pretty... Yo, what up, mi gente? This is Smiley from Pura Cultura Podcast, baby. We right here with the homie, Jose. Jose, Jose, where you from, bro? Chicago. Oh, damn, bro. Chicago. Everyone knows Chicago, bro. How's, uh, how's it been from Chicago, man? Ah, uh, a little crazy over there, you know. <laughs> I've been there all my life, so. So born and raised in Chicago? Yes, yes, born and raised in Chicago. That's what's up, man. So you were there through the 90s and all the 2000s. The 80s, and... the 70s, the 90s, all that. I'm old, man. I'm old. <laughs> What would you tell people about Chicago that they might not think about, man, being from Chicago, bro? Like, as far as... Like, some people might be scared to go visit Chicago, but if you want to let them know, like, they're missing out on certain things that, you know, if they don't... They don't, the food, they don't the visit. food. The food is good there. You're talking about, like, La Villita? Is that where the food's at? Yeah, La Villita, Pilsen. You know, that's about the... You know, the, the, that's where all the Mexicans are at, right? so it's pretty good there. The food's yeah. pretty good, yeah. How was it growing up in Chicago, bro? Before we get into the tattoo thing, how was how was it growing up uh, in Chicago being Mexicano, bro? It was a little rough. Yeah. It was a little rough, yeah. You know, I never ran with no gangs, but I knew a whole bunch of gangbangers and gangs, and they knew me because I was uh, an artist. You know, I've always been an artist. I was doing T-shirts, I did graffiti, I painted trains, I painted all that stuff, and people knew me. Everywhere, everywhere I went, people knew me. And then I got into the tattoo, tattoo game, and I've been doing it ever since. How old were you when you started? I was 20, 20, 20 years old. And uh, my son was one years old. Now it's, he's 31. Oh, shit. I've been doing it. I've been tattooing for a long time. When you couldn't get into a, an apprenticeship at a shop. So it's like, you, I learned how to make my own needles. I own inks, so I started. You know, no one taught me. I kind of, I'm a self-taught art, taught artist, yeah. and I took it from there, man. And I'm still, I help people, a lot of people out. You know, up-and-coming artists that want to learn. I, yeah, I teach them little, little things here and there. But, you know, that's dope, man. Because back in those days, there was no YouTube tutorials on how to, how to learn how to do all this. So it really takes a lot of drive for, for someone to want to learn, and, and, and do what they got to do to get all the equipment to get this started, man. Yeah, so I told a lot of these young cats, like, you guys got it easy, man. You guys, everything got handed to you guys because, you know, as old school guys, man, we had to make our own needles, figure everything out, like, we get the, the inks. And then the companies that were out there at the time, they, would, they didn't want to sell to you if you didn't have a business, if you weren't an established, a known artist. So we started from the bottom. Me and uh, one of my partners from Mexico, from San Luis Potosí, Steven Cancino, he owns uh, Artio Pecado. And me and him, you know, we, we used to hang out together and he taught me, he taught me some stuff, you know, and we taught each other and back and forth. And now I lost contact with him for a while. And then just like two years ago, we hooked up again. And now we're traveling all over the world, man. Oh, dope. So being a tattoo, being a tattoo artist has got you to travel around the world? Yes, yes. And, what's, um, what's a, what's an interesting spot that, that this tattoo, uh, that this tattoo game has got you to, man? It got me. Uh, it's got me pretty far, man. I, I own my own business. Uh, my wife, she uh, she's a bakery. She she used, she used to be a bakery ma uh, manager, and she quit quit her job. And then she's like, oh, I don't want to. I don't know what I want to do. But she had an art a, art major, so I said, start tattooing. Within a year, I taught her how to tattoo. She got more clients than I do now. Oh wow, wow, that's awesome, bro. So now you guys are uh, work together. Run a business together. Yeah, we we own the business together. We work here and there. She only does it when she has appointments because she she's in the corporate world now. You know she got a promotion with her job and she's but well, she's still she's still in the art game. She's still doing tattoos here and there. You know part time. Dope. 
Man, so what would you say is like the coolest thing about being a tattoo artist and owning your own shop, bro? You get to meet a lot of people, you get to travel, you know, network with a lot of people, meet people like you guys, you know, and and just it's fun, man. It's not it's not like a job. You know, you know how they say if uh, if you love what you do, it's not a job. Yeah. And that's how I feel, it's not a job. Like, you know, you, you put art on people, you know, sometimes you get some ugly ass tattoo that people want and try to convince them not to get it, but that's what they want, so we give them what the hell the fuck they want, you know? Is there any tattoos that you don't do, any locations that you don't do? I try to stay away from the neck. The neck, and I hate doing Roman numerals. Why is that? Man, half of these motherfuckers out here, they're not even Roman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, know? okay, I, 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 I can understand that. Yeah. What about people that are not Chicanos that want Chicano style tattoos? Do you, do you do those? I'll do them, you know, like, I try to tell them, hey, man, you know, you know every, every tattoo has a, has a meaning, has a, you know, it has its own culture. The Chicano tattoos, you know, have come a long way, man, a long ways, you know, and some people love it. And I, I tell them, hey, you know, this means this, this means that, and sometimes you get in trouble for some of this stuff, you know? If they want it, I try to talk them out of it, but I'll put it on them. That's what they want, you know? You got to make that money. You got to make that money. So as far as, like, I don't mean to cut you out. Go ahead. No, no. You know, like, our culture, you know, raza, you know, those Mexicans and Latinos, you know, we've come a long way, man. And, and through this art world, through this tattooing, it's brought us to a different, to a different level. You know, people recognize us, respect us. You know, and we're not the the game banging punks that everybody thinks we were, you know? Right. Yeah, I've noticed that recently, bro, like a lot of people have shown to respect and appreciate the Latino, Chicano, Mexicano culture, along with our style, with the tattoos, the music, the way we dress. Um, how do you feel about that? Like, do you feel like that's appropriation or appreciation? How do you feel about that? Like, now that more people are coming, trying to, like, Embrace the Latino culture, bro. Chicano culture. I think it's beautiful, you know. They embrace our culture, but uh, they need to know the history. You know what I mean? Like where it came from, how the struggle that that our our our, our culture, you know, the, the struggle that we had to to come to this to this point. You know what I mean? It's it, it was it was tough, man, because everybody hated us. You know, like oh, you know, they're they're low lives, they ain't nothing, and of course, because they, they 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 look at the People that were in prison, you know, like people in prison, we all made mistakes, man. We need a second chance, you know, and it, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. I think, yeah, I think it's a dope thing if people do do it respectfully. I think if you know, if you see people having like Chicano style tattoos or dressing like us, as long as res it's respectful, I think it's, it's a dope thing, man. Because we have a we have a very dope culture that I think is, it's a good thing that we are influencing other people to follow it through, man. Um, what would you say is like? the least thing that you like about being a tattoo artist, if there's something that you don't like about it? The least thing about being a tattoo artist, the long hours. Long hours. Long hours. And then sometimes, you know, people call you up when you're on your day off and they're like, hey, I want to come get tatted. And like, they want to schedule around their time. You know, it's like all artists, we have a family, we have, you know, our own thing we got to do still, you know what I mean? It ain't just about tattooing. And we, we love what we do, but we need time for ourselves too, you know? And it's a little stressful some, at times. Does it take a lot of discipline to run your own business and, and be a tattoo artist? Yes, a lot of discipline, a lot of hard time, a lot of hard work. It's, when I first opened my shop, I've been there 18 years. It was like every day, every day, even on Sundays. And it's like, I cut off time with my kids just to be there to make the money and build up my shop. And it's rough, man, it's rough. rough. Man, well, our podcast is about like highlighting the dope people that are doing dope things for our culture, bro, the cultura, bro. I think our culture brings a lot to the table, bro. So we like to talk to people that are doing dope things like yourself, man. Um, so I definitely appreciate your time, thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank um, you. Anything that you want to share with the people, man, um, where they can find you and all that stuff? I'm on. Uh, I'm in Chicago. Um, I'm on the south side. It's a little rough over there, but it's okay. It's not, not too, too bad. Um, <laughs> You catch me at a Hardcore Studios in Chicago. Uh, or you catch me on uh, on Instagram at uh, Jose68. Jose spelled H-O-E-Z-A-E-6-8. -E okay. All my artwork's on there. I'm an airbrush artist. I still do airbrushing. I do shirts, t-shirts, hoodies, cars, 
all kinds of I'm, I'm deep into the art art scene so that's very dope man i appreciate your time bro thank you brother we're definitely going to be uh networking and, yeah, and, yeah, and keeping in touch bro stay in touch man and just you know let's show the show the world what our, our our culture is about you know i mean it's not just what they think it is like you know like low lives and gang banging and it's not about that man you know we we need to respect just like everybody else. The only problem is our, our, our raza are too scared to stand up and speak for, you know, for themselves, you know, where we should, just like everybody else, you know, they up, throw up in arms, man. But everybody, you know, even the people that come from Mexico get, get, that are illegal, they have no papers. They have, they're the human just like everybody else and stand up, man, and fight for yourself because you know what, in the end, no one's gonna, if you don't fight for yourself, no one's gonna do it for you. That's facts, man. That's another reason why we do stuff like this. One more question, man. In our podcast, we focus on music. Music is something very dope with, with our podcast, with our culture, bro. What's the music that you listen to when, you, when you're getting down on some work, man? Uh, I listen to uh, rap, a lot, a lot of Spanish rap, like Quinto Sol, El Seis, you know, a couple of Ramon Ayala, Fidente Fernandez, stuff like that, you know what I mean? You know, and it all depends too. What you know, what kind of clientele I'm sitting with, because I don't like I don't like putting my headphones. You know, because some they want to talk to you and you can't hear them, and it's kind of ignorant. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's like you know how the Mexicans are. You know, si si tienes un taco, y, you know, alguien te pide un taco, no no vas a negar. You know, you, you know, give them some. You know, because you never know. One day, that's the way. That's why I am the way I am. You know, a lot of people hate me because they're like, oh man, why are you hating these how, these other artists? I said because one day. I might be in the gutter, and that, those motherfuckers might be the ones that are gonna say, hey, that motherfucker, he helped me out. Let's give him a hand, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's how it should be, bro, especially with our, with our, with our people, man. Like, yeah. just, cause you're, just cause you're up on top, don't look at them like, like they ain't shit. Right. You know, help them out, man, help them out. I think that's how you leave a legacy, man, when you help out the people coming after you, man. And you know, that's how a lot of people get respect for you in the game, bro. Again, man, thanks a lot for your time, bro. Thank you, man. Orale, this is Miley, check it out, baby. Soy yo y no cambiaré hasta mi último día lo que es mi cuida.